grasp of what are like what are things or components in it the terminologies that i have heard uh, do they make sense do they fit in a certain picture okay if in your head things can go just like and that usually means relating to the knowledge that you have so for example if you know one thing can you relate it can you actually say that ah oh, this is more like that so if you are kind of can make that kind of transformation that means you have different views that means you you understand it better or all you need then after that is of course there are some pieces that you don't understand so when whenever that happens you go and you basically um read it so to be able to do that i'm just going to ask and then I, I know that most people don't if you have question you can ask me in the beginning otherwise i'm going to start asking and everybody uh, interacting so who so when whenever we say now um algorand and then we were saying ethereum we were saying you know bitcoin you know so who can tell me the differences and then there are also other blockchains um if you have heard cardano solana this that so who can tell me the differences and the similarities you know that i expect certain hands martin Uh, okay, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, <coughs> if I will just uh, explain, oh. yeah. Sure. Sorry, yeah, yeah if I, I didn't if, put my earphone. Okay, okay. Oh. If I will, no. if I will, okay, if I will just explain my um, understanding uh, about just um, the the whole thing, the way I understood it, is that um, blockchains uh, like. Uh, they're like places where transactional data is like uh, a ledger of like transaction transactional data that is like when somebody makes a transaction it can be viewed over there and every every logs that concerns just transactions can be viewed over there and they can be traced from that particular uh, thing so the blocks having different blocks is that you can have one particular uh, maybe if it's whichever thing maybe like if it's a cryptocurrency like bitcoin it can run on all different types of uh, computers and it can be able to run on different types of networks that is you can be able to access it from wherever you are in the world uh, and you don't really have to go uh, to a particular one particular database to go and access that particular record you can access that particular record through the blockchain technology. If uh, if I understood uh, the, the what you are doing. so so the thing is that you used a lot of words. So I really actually don't know where you are in terms of. But let me ask you now. Use yeah. the economy of words and explain one. Like let's say you are making blockchain. I ask you. Okay, just give me a blockchain and tell me or you can ask other people you can also so what i'm gonna do today is that for example martin uh, volunteers to talk right he can just randomly call another name for the other person to continue whether they know it or don't know it it doesn't matter yeah sure. so just start building in your head mm -hmm. how you would build a blockchain and how you invite people okay uh start somewhere and then ask anyone else to continue if you want okay um i'll first of all uh use something that each and every person can be able to yeah. uh, no, no no general things just code let's talk code like let's just do you know let's just not general ideas but you know like let's say design based what do you do what will you use and you know Kind of components, technological components, kind of language, and how you will write it. So much more. Let's talk down. Oh, okay. Uh, so, in terms of uh, the language that I'll use, 
uh, if it's the programming language that are used to make this particular blockchain is the Python language. Okay. And then I'll How also... How will you start? Okay. okay, now I'll, I'll start first of all by getting... Uh, I'll, I'll create a, a token. I'll create a token. What is the name? Oh, okay, a token. Uh, can you be able to hear me? Oh, I do, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm putting you on the thing, right? So you, do, you oh, know, I think of it as just much more of like, only through this way of thinking or asking, you one can understand if they don't understand. Yeah. Well. So that's why I'm just, you know, don't put, don't, don't feel that you have to know or you should know. Okay. So you can, as I say, that's why I want to encourage, you can actually say like, okay, maybe now Remet just can continue. Like, let me think about it. You know, something like that. It's just, uh, I, I just want it to be like, you know, um, moved okay. such that everybody can, can start constructing. So the Python, you choose Python, so that's good. You are um, trying to define a token. Let's imagine instead of you say create, because you don't, like, let's just say you want to define a token. Okay, go on. Yeah. So I'll create a token and then I'll ensure that... Uh, but this... what is a token? Like, I oh, think yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a problem. Like, you know, you can't oh. use it if you don't know it. You know, if you oh, say, okay. like, I will create a variable, I know what you mean by a variable. But yeah. what is a token? Oh, yeah. a, a token is when uh, a client makes a request to a server and then uh, for you to be able to access any resource. Don't move now a lot. I mean, now you are server, whatever. I'm just in your Python, in your, you're saying that you, you are, you're going to use Python and you are going to use, you're going to create a token. I want, I want yeah. you to tell me like, what is that token? Is it a variable? Is it a class? It is function? What is it? You know, mm -hmm. just... Okay, it's, it's just like a, like a, a form of like an encrypted password Okay. Which somebody else can, when, when they want to access... So let's not the... forget, forget what the person is. Like, I'm just really going through the code, in the, the head code, you know, the code that's in your head, you know? Okay, so there is, a, a, there is like, that's a good thing, for example. This is some kind of um, hashed version of something. Like, so you, you, what that something, okay, let's just, we'll, we'll pass it to another person, what that something could be. So... Great, you start a token. You want to create a token. Let's start. Yeah. Whom can you? Whom do you want to choose to continue creating the token? Yeah. Uh, because that's a good I point. So let's, yeah, okay. let's start. To, let's continue with that. So choose some. Okay, I, I, I'll choose the Tadesa. Tadesa. Okay, continue Tadesa. So Martin wants to create a token, and you are working with Martin. Martin is about to go, and then he told you, "Okay, you know that I need to write this thing. So just create a token." It's a, hey. token is a certain kind of um, hashed quantity uh, of some password, call it, or in this case, let's call it private key. Okay. Okay. So, Actually, uh, I'm not that much clear, uh, but it's, um, it's about I'm... like we are going through the kind of okay. like you being the creator of um, blockchain. Okay. Like, and now we need the pieces and we need to understand what these pieces are. Okay, so, if, if yeah. that token... Uh, if what is that... a token? So try to tell us, like, what is a token from the, from that perspective? I think the token is in a blockchain. It is yeah. a, a secret key. A secret key which is used to store, uh, to store the transaction history in a given wallet i think so maybe uh, i'm not so, that much okay you are introducing it. a wallet so what did okay. you introduce now like new concepts that you introduced you introduced a wallet what else did you introduce yeah there is a wallet and uh, uh, there is a key which is generated for that wallet which uh, uh, okay so let's stop that, that transaction let's stop that okay. let's stop that so can someone tell us about the wallet what a wallet is but we are moving away from what martin started we wanted to create a, a blockchain and i think the important part is exactly we need to we need to provide a token so so we are now to 
now referring whenever we say now this key actually that's not a token that's kind of authentication and an address right so you already have created addresses so many addresses not maybe one address let's call it but i'm sure a number of addresses one of the addresses you sent it to me you know which address you sent it to me uh, could i talk yeah yeah, go on. yeah, yeah. Uh, actually token is uh, just uh, it is a kind of uh, uh, secret which is used to even to store the the, the yeah, no, I think the data of the because, user. No, no, no. The like, data so I asked it that this, uh, I asked it a question. What was this? You sent me already an address. I think that address, I think someone answered in the text. That address is called, it's not a token. That's an address. So whatever you are saying now, it is okay. just that exactly address or the public key. Just for example, you sent me an SSH public key. It's exactly the same. It's generated in exactly the same way yeah and it's that's that's an address a private key and it's public key is basically what identifies you it's kind of a, really an address you know like the ip the location or your ip for example in a computer space uh yeah. whatever it's kind of an address the only difference is that the two work very similarly so the public key really uh once you sign the public key and the signed something can be verified knowing that it's no somebody having your public key and somebody else so now in this case like let me um, introduce one um, part that might help okay um, because i i don't want to propagate uh the reason why i stop using it i just want to propagate i don't want to propagate wrong ideas but we still will continue so in cryptography it, cryptography doesn't come because blockchain comes but it was there since the 1980s so the whole point is that there is a public key a public key can be what your name uh, sorry the private key sorry so the private key can be your name it can be you uh, know uh, yabba fantai that can be a, a private key you know it's a private key is just anything that you want to hide from another person of course if i use a private key of my name imagine it's like people would just immediately break it so uh, the reason why private keys are long are basically just so that you know but you generate just some random number like random something right and that random number becomes a private key that becomes a seed you know for in a random generator it's called a seed also in, in this case it's a type of random number generator this cryptography and now then you have some mathematical advances that that was in the 90s 80s that was made this was called ellipt elliptic curve an elliptic curve is really a special type of form equation that takes some random stuff something like you know and then it processes it so it processes it such that you know we know like uh, it's almost impossible then it generates a, a public key okay so that means what you are what you say to me so an ssh key basically generates first the private some random number what is what it, you will use you will call that one private key that private key you don't need to generate it by any other thing you can just generate it by hand it's it's okay it could be your name your mother's name your address blah blah combined right then from that you multiply this by this elliptic curve and then you get a public key. Great. Now that public key is to be shared with everybody. That's why it's called public. Now let's imagine I have your public key. In this case, the public key is AWS, the machine has your public key. Now you want to sign in to that machine. Yeah. When you want to sign in, what it does is that the, the things you send to sign in is that you use your private key and use, it's called the signing. So you there basically have a message that you sign with your private key basically what it does is that your private key plus that message hashed okay now you send this hash to the basically the server now the server knowing your play your public key and then a hashed message it goes in and kind of like it can multiply it can actually 
the only way it works is that if that public key was generated by private key, then the operation, another type of a literary operation, will basically decode it. Then we know for sure that that message was written by a private key, which is responsible for the generation of this public key. Okay. That's, that's it. Are we, do we have question? Because that's so important. That's everywhere. It, no, it's not about blockchain. It's about SSH key. That's about anything. So if you don't understand it, it's your time now. But do you understand that? How public key and private key works? Yes, uh, Brooke? Yeah. Um, so uh, we're going to sign our uh, uh, transaction. Yeah. Yeah, the transaction using our private key, and so the 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 one the receiver is going to uh, decrypt the message with our uh, public, key. public key, right? Yes. So that means uh, can can everyone? I mean, everybody who has my public key can see the signature. I mean, because the, the public yeah, key. Yeah, they they can. So the the thing is, they they can. It's like basically they would. So the one thing that they can't is to to sign. But they will be if they have public key, they will see your message. I mean, only the signature or the message? message? The message, like I mean, whatever message that you send. So for, that's why everyone in the blockchain will be able to read what kind of transaction oh, you want to do. Okay. That's why it's like because you, you know you're you're not gonna sign some some um, something, right? But that's the reason why you say okay, public keys are free. Because you most of the time somebody cannot do on behalf of you, but the message that you sent, you know, with that private key, they will see if they have the public key, and that's exactly what you intend to. You send your public key to everyone so that they can see what you are sending, right? Of course, that that is you cannot use, for example, um, uh, what is it called? That one. There is no reverse. Like they cannot reverse, they cannot sign uh, or decrypt or kind of infer your private key. But if it's addressed to them and they have your public key, one thing they can say is that exactly this, they can defer it, defer it. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I have a question. Yeah. Um. Is the public is the public key like saved or the yeah, it's the one not... is for like, you know you, you compile for for all your groups you call it idrsa dot p you know pub that's your public key your private key if you open them if you didn't open them just your private keys are just some random st string your public key is also some kind of string. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing just mysterious about them. It's just some kind of, you know, it's just mathematically, if you knew, like, you know, like the elliptic curve, it's just a simple uh, type of, okay, let's say, some mathematical thing that just does that. The only, the most important advance in that is that because they are so, there is no way to go back. Every other thing with enough information, you will be able to go. But this one's no. That's the only difference. Okay, I have a question. Yeah. Like we can save it in the public key when it's first generated. Is it saved in that particular machine? The private key or the public key? I don't understand. The, the public key. Public key is to be shared, right? So it's generated yeah. together. So when you say SSH, whatever, it generates the private key, but the private key is not, gen it's kind of, you create it, it's created. Um, so it's like, sorry, um, it's actually just like you can actually define your, your own private key, you know, you can say one, two, three, you know, Kenya, blah, blah, something, you know, and then you give it to the SSH generator. And that's what's basically, it's a mathematical operation. It takes that thing as an input, multiplies it with that. You can read a little bit about elliptic curve and then it generates public key. Now, the only thing is that if you want to use that public key for, you know, 
to do some sign in, whatever, you must protect your private key. Because your private key, it always, it, it can be used whoever has, who has public key. If you send, if a malicious, you know, kind of transaction, if it's transaction, for example, if you, if, if someone has your private key, basically that's it. They can do whatever they want. Whatever you do, there's nothing else. Whoever has private key, you know, in blockchain, there's nothing, no address, no name, no where are you from, no question. All you have that identifies who is the owner of a token or who is the owner, if you have like a billion dollar in crypto, in Bitcoin, the only thing you have, the only thing that identifies it's you who owns it, that one billion, it's just your private key. That's it. If I steal that private key, that's why if you have this kind of, bit, you know, if, if you have trading Bitcoin and if people know how to find your Bitcoin, your private key, they can kill you. I mean, that's simple. It's not even like a money or it's not even like a card. There's no further authentication. That's it. It's just it. Is that, is that super, super clear? Uh, I have a question. There's nothing. It's like, it's not like a bank card. Oh. Okay, so uh, our public key is the, 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 our identity, yeah, so, but it, it needs to be related to our private key. So uh, what, what, what if we lose our private key? So can, can we... That's it, you're dead. Can we generate... You're dead. Yeah? <laughs> you're dead. You're dead. It is, there's nothing else. That's what I'm trying to... There is nothing else. There's no, it's not the whole system that you know, like, oh, something protects you, no. Nobody knows, that's why nobody knows who's the owner. The owner of a, a Bitcoin, let's imagine there's a Bitcoin that is, who's, which is associated to a certain public key address and it has $1 billion equivalent, let's imagine. Okay? okay. Who's the owner? Who's the owner of that $1 billion? Brooke. Yeah, sorry. Who's the owner? Which one? So in, in Bitcoin, I am a, I told you that there is a, an address. Yeah. It's called XYZ, blah, blah. And associated to it is there is a 1 billion, like, uh, you know, let's say 10 Bitcoins. Let's imagine there are or 100 Bitcoins. And let's imagine that if, uh, the, the value is $1 billion. Okay. Yeah. And who's the owner of that? Like... Yeah, that the, one the, the one the one who is associated with that specific public key yeah so who's that owner like what what does he have or what does she have um simple just private key whoever has the private key of course yeah that's it no it's not about a person it can be a dog if the dog can actually present a private key or has the private key swallowed, let's say some uh, the paper, which has the private key, the only the owner of that is the dog. There's nothing else. No amount of authentication or no amount of let's imagine knowing that oh it was you who owned it will will be beneficial. It's not the legal system we live in. It's the private key. The private key owner is the owner, that's it. So you can go to the court and of course they can, you can try to get the dog so that you can you know, treat the dog well so that because it swallows the paper that you wrote your private key. So you want the dog you know, to treat it so that it can spit it out. That's the best you can do. <laughs> yeah, is that super, I want it to be super, super clear. Like, you know, that's the base. That's clear for me. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So we, we heard from uh, Samuel, what is an elliptic curve multiplication? It's basically, um, it's a function that just takes this input and operates. Um, so the, de the, the design of the operations that goes on in that multiple, you know, that elliptic curve is basically dependent on, of course, which kind of, you know, is that SSH, you know, uh, 256 or is it something? And so that it, it depends, but it's just the type of operation 
which takes an input, it's which takes an input and transfers, you know, in, in high school mathematics, if you, you, you know, it's kind of transfer, like maps it into another space. It's, so it's a mapper. You know, it's just it's a simple mapper is, for example, x squared, right? What does x squared do? x squared just takes an input called x and then it basically uh, squares it. It multiplies x times x. So it maps x to x times x. Yeah. So that's called quadratic. It's a quadratic function. In this case, analytic, if you want, just I can. So this is basically a type of curve. It does some kind of, um, you know, it just do some kind of transformation. And it's the design and the parameters that makes it a function, but that's it. So you can read about, but it's a transformation given an input and given its constants, it's basically just generate um, something. And the solution, in this case, let's imagine X is your private key, then it multiplies it, then it solves Y. But the solution of Y really depends on X. There's no way sometimes to, unless, unless you have X, to know the solution of Y, because Y could be infinitely many, right? So the solution to solve this thing, to solve Y, you know, the value of Y could be, there could be so many infinite values of Y. And it, it basically just generates that Y is your, you know, your, let's say your private uh, public key. So X is your private key and Y is your public key. And, but there are multiple Y's that could, that would be a tiny change in X, a one single digit in X will really basically become so different Y. So there's no way you can be close to it. And they are not also just like zero, you know, one and let's say yab like a multiple of yabbal yabbal let's say like it's a i concatenate yabbal to be 100 times now just the last digit being one l from l if i change it to something else let's say um, uh, m then the the space in this case it's almost identical right it's almost identical it's yabbal 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 in the last one instead of L, it becomes uh, M. So you think like, oh, it's so close. I'm so close, then I should know it. I should know what's wise. But no, in elliptic curve, what's really the difference is that there is no way that something so close in, the, in their public space or why they are close to. No, it's just random. So that's, that's this randomness of this function is what makes it so attractive. So let me stop there in just in that sense. Hopefully that's clear. It's basically just what makes elliptic curves so amazing and why they are used is basically just there is no pattern to how two things, X being, you know, this and that, so close in our space, but they don't, there's no necessarily like, uh, there's no way to go back. So that's basically just this element that what I was showing you, there's no way go back. And some people think, of course, quantum computers can do that because the number of operations they can do could be a lot. But now there's also post-quantum elliptic curves that basically even quantum computers cannot solve. Hopefully that's clear. Because this is so basic that, I mean, so fundamental, the entire blockchain is based on, and not only blockchain, but everything that you, you know, Git or so many other things that, that you know that are based based on hashes like SSH entrance or uh, even Docker, you know, or all of these things that you know, it's just built on, on this just hash uh, phenomena. So you have to know that. Okay. Who owns the private key? The person who generates it. I hopefully, yes. So Dubai and sale. Okay, that one will come. And okay, so. Is there any unanswered question just so far? Okay, Martin, go on. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, does, is there like any like machine learning 
uh, involved with blockchain just i was a bit curious i think i think it's you know it's um it's a wrong question because it's what does that mean even what does that machine learning mean like in a way that we are we are basically so you can always learn patterns right and patterns is not we are not now learning about patterns of private keys but we can learn of course for example if you are trading like i in one of my projects that i do for example we trade um like trying to predict stock market uh, of cryptocurrency that's that's machine learning right so what does that mean when you say machine learning and everything is data engineering like setting up a place where to store all these transactions is a data engineering problem does, does that make sense because you see like sometimes the question may sound nice uh kind of it it may sound yes it's right but it also sometimes may may you have to ask it like what do actually i mean by that do i really understand what what i mean by machine learning do i am understanding what is like so it's just important like so do you see what i mean it's like machine learning is anything that you basically are trying to search pattern without modeling it nothing more there's no magic about machine learning deep learning machine learning and deep learning operates in exactly the same way as elliptic curve kind of thing they just fit and transform you know some equations right and then you try to search those parameters so the you know it's like we of course the implication of it becomes so much you know deep learning having being able to operate lots of matrices in a certain way in a in a gpu really allows you to search so many things and capture so many amazing things but ultimately you must see them they are just some matrices whose variables are being searched you know when you think of now there's del e you know like this you give it uh, a word like it's an open ai thing and then it will draw some amazing picture you can tell it farmers you know farming or farmers um let's say uh, driving a horse or like riding a horse sorry then it will draw something but it, it doesn't do anything it's just that it has a canvas canvas means a matrix and then basically based on those words and based on the model that it has it will put value to those pixels or basically to those matrices right it's basically is changing numbers and then you as a human then when that will be given as a color and then you see it and then oh that's true this is a farmer and um you know riding a horse there is a horse there's a but that thing may don't need to understand it anything they basically just change its numbers uh let, let's say if it is drawing on uh, uh let's say a uh, 8 megapixel or 60 megapixel kind of picture then it's basically it means like four mega each that means four thousand rows four thousand by rows it just basically estimated sixteen thousand numbers um to certain values basically it, it draws you know basically you can call them if it was a random number generator the random number generator draws sixteen thousand numbers but they amount to anything because they, if you put associate them with a picture they don't you know the picture is random like some kind of noise what it does this this thing is just that instead of drawing a random number it draws it kind of puts the value such that their pattern becomes a farmer and a horse you know so there's nothing else so ultimately it's the same thing is the elliptic curve you give it certain num x then it does some transformation and it gives you another thing it, and then that thing has a value in it basically that transformation has a value the machine learning transformed a certain you know like you give it a 16 uh, generate this based, and then an input of let's say a, a text and then it takes that one some does so much crazy operation and then gives you a 16,000 numbers 
let, let's call it that one a public key, you know, or, <laughs> but then when you actually put it into a picture form, great, you get a farmer and amazing. So what we call elliptic curve is not a machine learning model, right? So in a fundamental sense, I, I know I'm talking very down, down, down to the mathematical layer, but it's useful sometimes to know there's nothing magic about all of this. It's just a mathematical operation in some transformed way. Does that does that does that make sense, Martin? Yeah, uh, thanks. I've understood. Great. Okay. So I'm not discouraging from asking even those kind of questions. I'm just sometimes the way when I answer, I might not give you the exactly satisfying answer because I feel um, the most important part, as I just am saying, describing now, is trying to see like, for example, we say token. We need to understand what is token. Sure, of course, like, you know, I lived in this space long enough. It's easier for me. Some things like the mathematical formulation of it, whatever, is probably easier. And, you know, it's okay if sometimes the way that, you know, like the, I am telling you, it, it's a bit more abstract. Um, don't bother, it gets easier as you get along. But I just want to make sure that none, whether you call it deep learning, machine learning, crypto, blah, blah, it's a form, a form of transformation of something. Like in this case, you know, a deep learning or a machine learning takes the data and extracts something. It identifies pattern. And the power of it depends on how good it does with a smaller number of data or how good it does as you increase the number of data. You know, that's the thing. Um, great. Okay. Any questions? So like a private key and a public key, an address now is sorted, right? Is there anyone who hasn't understood? Or who has some question? No? Great. Clear. Okay. So now let's continue Martin's uh, kind of blockchain, right? We had now, so what is a token then? Okay, we now understood what an address is because we needed an address in any way to identify anything. So address is basically coordinates. Right. So if now a person comes in, how do we know that this is a person? Because as uh, in Algorand, uh, the, he was telling you, Cosimo, the only thing we know is that there is that public key has a value. That means somebody has transferred to it. So now how do we invite now 100 people? So they, we are forming now our own blockchain. We are alone at first to start with. So how do we continue? How do we invite more people? And how do all of these people will start having token? Let's imagine, just let me define it. It's just a variable. In Python, it's a variable. That variable is basically uh, what we call like, it's a structure, okay? It's a token, it's a structure, uh, or in, 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 in Python sense, let's call it a class. A token is a class, and that class contains data, and each of that data, so it's or in, in a new Python, it's data class, okay? So it has basically, you can query what it has, uh, and it needs to have a certain structure, if it's in a blockchain or um, something. So that basically, um, this is a block or a transaction, right? So the when we say like a token, it is one value that's associated. So I think there should be somewhere down. Yeah, so this T. So this is. Um, I think I have an example. So this is a structure, this is a token, okay? And the token, I mean, this is a transaction, but which basically in Bitcoin, that's basically identical. So what a token is a value that's associated number of outputs, okay? So that basically, whenever you have the receiver, the sender and the receiver, 
The sender can only send if they have in a previous transaction they were mentioned. Okay. And then a new or an old and existing one will have uh, a, a, an account if they are mentioned. And then the account or the, the token amount that they have is mentioned as the output number. So basically, if there is such transaction, any transaction to which this, in this case, let's say the, um, the, um, Yeah, so I think this one, okay. So the, like an actual token is really like you send, so this transaction sends, um, has an, an input that basically comes from a previous transaction. And then this one sends from its account to output zero, output one, output two are basically addresses, public keys, okay? Now, basically, in this output that are mentioned, how much you are sending right there. So you're saying 0.2 value because PT BTC is known from the blockchain. So that's basically you have mentioned output or value to be 0.2. Now, uh, output zero will have basically 0.2 token, right? And that token being BTC or that the unit. So the unit itself is because in, in Algorand, it, 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 he told you when one, basically one million, it's a, because it's a micro. So you basically, one token is basically a one, one millions of, um, let's say uh, BTC and that get algo. So that's it. That basically, whenever we say a, a token, we're really referring the unit itself, which is what, what defines one. And then the multiplier or the coefficient, which is basically defined in a transaction. Okay. So then we say two BTC or one BTC or point two BTC. Like basically that just, that's what it means. So there's nothing special. It's a, a class, like a token is basically this, call it the, the coefficient in a class. So the, 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 the variable, that stores the coefficient uh, of a certain unit and the unit plus the coefficient together that means you know 2x let's call this one the the unit being x so 2x or 2 million x basically becomes a token value again is that clear i know that it, it's not that super clear at the moment but in bit tokens how they are defined is different from blockchain to blockchain but in all of them so for example, Bitcoin doesn't have any storage where it stores tokens or it stores even variables. It's basically whenever almost always every, the final transaction is what, what you have, okay? So the final transactions define which account has what, that's it. That's all there is in Bitcoin. And there's no specific variable that stores a token independently. While in Ethereum and Algorand, all of this, what's called second generation uh, cryptocurrencies or blockchains, what they have is that they actually have a separate variable which stores the value itself. So you can do some kind of operation. You know, it's like you can do subtract or um, add on it. So it's like call it V, you know, value or token, call it even just token. So in all of this, basically, uh, you you have a token is basically a variable, you know, a Python variable. Does that make sense now? Um, no, so, so like, so, when we when we start there is in all of the blockchains there's called the genesis block okay without it and a genesis block and a protocol so what does that mean it's basically you're defining your protocol the protocol says so in bitcoin so that's why it's slightly different that's why i asked you what is the difference earlier what's the difference between bitcoin ethereum and algorand right the, the thing is 
In all of them, there is called the Genesis token. Uh, sorry, the Genesis block. And this block needs to specify how new tokens are generated and what is the initial token amount that it's basically and then the protocol so that from that on the owner of that cannot change it's you know even if you are a creator michael is a creator of this blockchain called michael blockchain uh, uh, martin blockchain basically that's it he can't change after that the genesis block defines both how new things are created so let's say if you start with usually they start with small so that you know people don't feel that they you know they are rewarding themselves but let's say martin will create one public key one private key and the public key and keeps the the, the the private key and then for the the public key he would give it a value that's called the in the genesis um, block the amount of value you want to start with okay so martin could decide also to create not only one he can actually generate one million um, private keys or basically um, no he doesn't he usually he would start one private key or if he actually developed this martin blockchain with five people he would basically each of them would generate one private key they equally will assign value to this token by hand and i mean to this public key they have by hand right and they would just say okay each of us will have 10 units that means if it was uh, you know if they're creating what's called bitcoin so each of them will have 10 10 10 10 it is you can assume it they reward themselves just for developing it if they assign 1 million of it it's really the the value of the token will be depreciated it's basically you know that that's an art itself then you say after this more tokens like because you know we are only five now we have now assigned 10 each of us so that basically it's there's only 50 of this but we you know if, if it needs to be global there needs to be a way to to actually generate um, a token so one way of a uh, token would be or to generate is a to call mining that means if someone does some kind of work in this blockchain helps this blockchain to grow they for demonstrating this their work they will earn something so in bitcoin that in the beginning until the, the number of block reach certain point that everyone who mines a block you know who basically mines a new block that basically means verifies certain transactions and then puts them as a block and as the community accepts whenever you have that you are allowed or automatically the software will write will give you 25 you will associate 25 bitcoin to the person who mined it or basically who verified it right whose block is accepted so now each block whenever they are mined every block that's mined there is now 25 bitcoin generated and it goes to the person who's mining that's why a lot of people wanted to mine because you know 25 bitcoin if you think of it at the current price it is 30000 one bitcoin you know you basically when you start when you mine one one block you will get basically millions right but of course it's hard to to mine because everybody wants to mine it so it activated that's why bitcoin became so popular right because people wanted to mine because they would get 25. of course after a certain block now i think the the thing is you only get five block five bitcoin for mining still you know for mining one if you succeed to mine one you basically five times the um, 30,000 you know that's basically 150,000 dollar you get okay for just being able to mine one if you succeed so is that clear now so now each block will create every time a block is created now any there will be five or now five in the past 25 bitcoins would have been added that means now the value the, the number of tokens are growing and the way that they grow it's because somebody demonstrated it and how how is what is demonstration or proof of work will come to it but it's basically a way of like demonstrating um you know that you know it, it works that a, a block um is is valid
that's called in proof of work. Um, Is that clear? Clear with Michael. Okay. Uh, yes. I mean, so now we have another concept. So in Bitcoin, or there are different consensus how things, how consensus is is done. One is called proof of work. Another is called um proof of stake okay now in proof of work absolutely it's basically the higher the computing the more probable you are you know again because this is again a random number you know you're just generating random number and testing uh, and you need if you have a lot of computing power you can generate so much which basically allows you to be more more likely that you will be the one to mine it and that if you have only one computer, you know, you know, just you are competing with other people who can generate fast the number, you know, and and so that's in proof of work. Yes, in proof of work, it is the computing resource that is that basically defines who who will who's more likely. In proof of work, it's the in proof of stake. Stake means the amount of stake you have in the coin in the blockchain right let's say in ethereum or in an algorand if you now have in algorand one billion dollar uh, stake of course you really want the algorand to to be stable you know its value to go up so that basically just like you vote in this case there's no waste there's no random number generation it's just that the more you start owning the more you start buying it the more you will influence it or that basically is just what it's a simplest form i'm talking about like but it's basically a stake in it matters uh, so it's the economic so it's basically capitalism driven right again it's a very simplistic way of you should read about proof of stake because there are multiple multiple proof of stake um and is that clear does that answer your question you did it? Great, that's fine. Okay, uh, yeah, well, I just wanted to confirm something for me. Yeah. Um, so uh, the tokens are like the units for the uh, currency. So, for example, for Algorand, it's like uh, one million of it is, I think, it's one, one. token. So, yeah. So yeah, one million so micro micro algo I, basically becomes okay, yeah I one one algo. Okay, so uh, when uh, we uh, buy the, the small amounts of the algo, so we will divide the token to each other, like point something, point something like that? No, it, it, you see, the point something is for us, but actually every trade happens by those micro. So it's like, do you buy one micro, two micro, thousand micro? Okay. So it's still integer. Okay, but, uh, but okay, okay. In Bitcoin is the same. When you say point blah blah, it's actually Bitcoin. It uses a different type of um, unit. It's called ten to the minus eighteen. It uses so that's why you can really divide it so so small. Okay, so uh, the tokens will be stored on uh, our machine, right? Right. If I if I put there's the no, Bitcoin, no, in Bitcoin wow. there is no such thing. There is no storage. Okay. The transaction defines everything. So okay. what, what you have is a transaction, okay, in Bitcoin. And the transaction is something like that. Okay. It so is it a version, the okay. a version, number of inputs, okay? So basically how much you have that comes from uh, your previous, uh, in, this, in this plot as, as I was trying to show, this, the input comes from a previous. So now there is one thing called the genesis right so the genesis block will assign this thing by hand input by hand because there's nothing before it so there's the genesis block defines input by hand 
uh, to say how much. So the 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 address is here in the TKX, and just before there is an address, a public key, right? For that public key, how much input does it have? Okay, so that's defined by hand in the genesis. After that, all, all of that the genesis block can transfer. Now it could be the genesis block that's transferring. Let's imagine this is the first block after the genesis. Okay, now the owner of that genesis block, like all the public key, the owner of the private key will have, let's say we assigned for it 10 Bitcoin. And this basically is defines that 10. So this is 10, it's a reference to the, the last blockchain. So this is a reference, okay? A reference to the previous uh, uh, ID or a previous address. And that basically defines how much out input it has because the output of the previous is the input of now. And then it defines how much it wants to send for, um, so output zero, one, two. In Bitcoin, there is no such thing even you know, if you have like, let's say 1 million Bitcoin, you want to send me one Bitcoin, there's no way you can say, okay, I will send the Abbebal one, one Bitcoin. There's no way. What you had, the previous transaction, you had, let's say one, one million Bitcoin. That's it. And you, they must all divide to, to this number. The sum of output zero, output one, output two must be equal to input zero. So that means if you send them even a single, a single a 0 0.001 Bitcoin, if you don't associate other outputs, other addresses, that's it. <laughs> you will send me everything you have. At the end, the, uh, the sum of the outputs must be the sum of the inputs in, um, in Bitcoin. So that means that's why at every, every transaction basically stores itself the value. So now, what? how do you make some kind of, let's say, you send me one, and when you send me one, you will have, let's say, let's start with 100 Bitcoin, you send me one. Now, at the end, you must have 99 left, right? To do that, yeah. the output first will be my address, but the output one could be your, your own address. So in that case, okay, then you say like, the input, the output zero, I give one, the output, for the output one, you will give 99. So you actually must transfer to yourself the, the remaining to be able to do the transaction because there's no variable that stores like and does some kind of sum and addition. The transaction defines everything you have. So that's why here, as you can see, one Bitcoin output zero, like that will receive uh, 0 0.2 and then uh, outputs, uh, so like the, the second transaction would receive 0.6. So then there is 0.2, that 0.2 is basically now left to the miner because at 0.2 now, you know, this is 0.8, but you had only one. Basically the output two is empty. So there's basically the output two will be left for the miner. The miner can claim it, can attach uh, themselves, okay? That's so in, in, in Bitcoin, there is nothing, no storage per se. Everything is stored in the block. And these transactions are stored in a certain structure that's called, you know, um, it's this, the Merkle tree. Basically each of these transactions will be stored as a tree, the different transactions, and each of them being hashed, 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 hashed. And the last one will be what's reference called the block reference. So. All of this will be just, you know, simple transactions, just as you can see, this is very simple data. So blockchain now with even its billions or millions of blocks, it still is some kind of terabytes. It's not like, you know, um, huge number of data. You can still, um, you know, all of these blocks, most of the time, they don't have that much data. So that's why it's really the whole in the whole blockchain can be stored in one in one place. Okay, but on the proof of stakes, there is a... No, a not only proof of stake, not only proof of stake. Uh, for example, Ethereum is actually, um, this is, Ethereum is actually a different type of blockchain because it it wants to be, it wants to not only be um, 
for currencies, cryptocurrencies, but it wants to be also smart contracts. You know, many other things like NFTs, right? So for that okay. reason, the Ethereum as well as also um, Algorand and many of these, the second generation, what you call them, have a memory space exactly. So in that memory space, this is how it's stored, okay? So you know, it, it now, unlike uh, Bitcoin, they now have an address, like basically a database, a small database record, which records the account and its associated data. So the account, there are two types of account. One is called the actual account that just can make transaction. Uh, and that has a balance, a storage, a nuance, and a code hash. Basically, for a normal account, for a normal person, this code hash is empty. Okay? So, and the storage basically stores all type of transaction uh, that they make. Or in that sense, that's why you pay for this as well. Not only... So this, this for this space you pay. Um, that's why it's called gas in, in blockchain. Uh, so in, in Ethereum, yes. And the balance basically is added. It's a variable, call it, you know, this can be a data class, right? In Python, if you implement it. And then the, the balance will be subtracted or added to it, unlike blockchain. So every account. If this account in, blo in, uh, in Ethereum, the other account can be a smart contract account. So in that account, basically, the only difference is that the code hash basically becomes a code. It's always executed. It cannot initiate at all transaction on its own unless it is called. So when it is called, so this is basically a class. Calling, basically call it this class is instantiated. When this class is instantiated, of course, it runs this code. And then when that code runs, of course, that code can transact, can actually do some kind of transaction, can send another person some, some coin, blah, blah. But on its own, it cannot initiate uh, some kind of um, transaction. That's the difference. Okay? So that is why Ethereum, it has to run this code, the, the one that's called, it has called virtual machines. So now it's not only Ethereum, Algorand, and all of them have that. Okay, and then each of them have what we call local space, right? So basically the things that they will store. So for anything that you store here, you pay. That's what gas is. And also for the virtual machine to run your code, you pay as well per, per computation cycle, right? That's why your code must be very, very, and it's expensive. You know, I, at some point I was listing the amount of cost Yeah, so to store a byte, the amount of gas, uh, basically in cents, it's in euros, it's like that, right? 0 0.005, to store a single byte. Hmm. To increment a byte, you pay 0 0.02 euros. To vote, that basically means to change a byte, check or update, that basically is 0 0.05 because it, it, it needs to read the read cycle plus, you know, the check cycle. And, and, and it requires three, three of that. So that's why it's kind of three times uh, something. It, it gets like that. And then um, to short circuit, blah, blah, it's very small, basically, because you're basically nullifying it. Is that... Uh, so... Every time you free a space, for example, let's imagine you store something, you free space, you get money. You get actually, because each of the byte is actually money in themselves. So if you delete them, you actually release some money. Yeah, okay. Great. I will share this because I'm, I'm not going through this in you know, each byte by detail. The reason is because it doesn't matter if you, I want it to be a lot more that you have a clear now perspective. What is a block? How does a block work? What, what is like in different blockchains is different terminologies, but as you see, you don't need even to start to identify a person. You don't need even to keep a variable. 
a transaction is a variable a transaction in bitcoin in bitcoin a transaction is token or a value a value is just a transaction that's it the transaction is everything there's nothing else more than a transaction and in the transaction records itself without any variable who has what you know who has how much because the input basically can be you know the input of one basically becomes an output and that output becomes an input to the next to the next so it is a chain so that's how it is okay now any other concept that okay it's kind of i am building this is a much more of the foundational intuition you're getting right we have we are now building on top of this we're using this blockchain on top of it now in a token you know in within the type of let's call them second generation and first generation uh blockchains in the first in the second generation because we will be using you know smart contracts whatever most of the time these days we are talking about second generation those with with memory those basically those with account right um bitcoin doesn't have account bitcoin has only transactions and transactions refer to a certain public key that's it that's all there is and those public keys whatever mentioned those public keys becomes account the owner of that you know the owner of the private key that generates that public key can anytime go and access claim it and they will they will get it right so they can you know transfer so that's why it's just bitcoin is like that the second generations like ethereum algorand they have actually a space where they keep like to gate to to be added you must have basically you buy a space because you are storing like you are saying like okay, add me into your into this uh, accounts uh, holder uh, database and the, and that's why you need to pay for that you need to the the first person must transfer for you some amount for you to have an account in bitcoin no in bitcoin if even someone transfers zero amount to you that's it you know it's you you would still be part of it and because you don't pay anything right so uh, that's why you can actually, if you are a criminal, you can keep changing. Let's say today you use one private key. Tomorrow you, you generate one private key and all of your amounts from the previous one, you transfer it to this new one. So you can just basically keep generating new private keys. Nobody knows who you are. It's just the private keys are changing constantly. So um, while in kind of Ethereum, whatever, to start being added, of course you have if it's so small you basically <clears throat> you still need to pay like you need you need to have at least a 0 0.1 whatever in the kind of algo so that's basically uh, a 1000 micro algo you need to have to start the account right so that's kind of uh saves minimum okay uh, i understand that uh, every block hold this um uh transactions. See, transactions yeah so uh how exactly are blocks selected to be uh the candidate for the next uh, the next uh, random so the random that's that's what i'm going to show you here exactly good question you see it yeah i i do these are transactions coming live. I'm showing you live just how Ethereum works. Okay. And they basically randomly like, so each of them, they check the people who, who are, these are smart contracts, as you can see, blah, blah. So each of them, like you see, like the next block is being minted, right? This, the, this is the next one. So as you go on, so this is the past one and this is the, you know, so these are already minted. These are blocks. Now the the next block is being done. The block number is um, one four nine five six five two four. So it's basically um, you know like it's just randomly selecting to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. So to select the person, the person who's who's kind of mining will select. Of course, if you reward, if if it sees that your transaction can reward, can pay a little bit more, they select it earlier. So you would, you can have, but still all the time, 
you know the, the, so just these are coming from everywhere like different types of transaction and then they're basically being mined and then when they agree just that's gone and gone and gone so it's random it's pure random and random combined whatever so in each of the as you can see some blocks are even no transaction you may just happen to really just verify only without any transactions or one or many all you have constraint is that you cannot have more than a certain amount but it can be zero for example this one is kind of this one went and added and therefore this is verified you know the rate means basically that the the, the block it's kind of you know if you zoom so this block is basically um uh, not good i mean that's basically if to pull no. um, but, um, so that's a direct link yeah so so red ones usually i think there's a somewhere a description so yeah this is valid transaction atrium value so usually if someone comes in front of you and and they make they continued the um, you know they used the latest one so this basically was faster than this even if this was submitted so that's why this was probably rejected okay and then this one is, is kind of uh, accepted and therefore this one cannot be used so all of those transactions still will be you know kind of um will be mined later but this is it so it's just random does that does that make sense yeah it does make sense uh but i have a follow-up question yeah if the, if the blocks are randomly connected how will we be this uh, block refer, this block must refer the previous one so that's yeah, how I, uh, okay, I understand that but how is going how are we going to track uh, certain uh, individuals for example uh, where was or uh, how much he owns uh, in general uh, it's my understanding that uh, his uh, transactions are what keeps track of his uh, yeah. meaning so, so if in, in run... bitcoin in bitcoin by just looking at the last transaction for that person that's it the last transaction states how much that person has so that means you see the out he was he or like, like whoever your account the value of your account is the value of your account that that uh, that received from a previous transaction so that's all what bitcoin will check so you don't keep track of anything other than you keep track of basically just the you know the transactions and you can always because the, you can always like as i was saying the tree is here the tree the transaction tree is always yeah this one so this is the transaction tree so and i think as you can see the block so the block the header this is the hash of everything and each this hash n is the hash of the transactions right and then basically the merkle tree contains all the transactions now this hash sorry hash n is the previous hash sorry and then the merkle tree hash is the merkle root hash is the all the transactions that happens within this block they are now stored in a disk basically and then the hash of an hash of a a tree that final hash will be also part of a block you know in this there is a header and a block and and a header block and then this is kind of what is called the data you know the data block and so all there is is basically just this number and this hash in refers to this hash in like so the the previous one now you can backtrace for example if i now make a transaction it it will basically tell whether i have or not it's because it would be um i can trace back to a certain point where you have right where you have you you were the output of 
a transaction. If you were the output of a certain transaction, then you basically have some amount. Yeah, does that does that make sense? Yeah, I think it does make sense. So basically, uh, when I want to make a, a new transaction, yeah. uh, it will create a new block. You will saying... refer. What, what do you refer? You will refer in your transaction the block that you were in. Okay. Basically, the well, that block that you you know that uh, that you, you got the, the you got the transaction. So you were the output of that block basically, or you were there was a transaction. So your account or the account you are mentioning now had a transaction, the last transaction that it had as an output of a previous transaction. You know, so it's kind of you're basically referring hashes, hashes of a block. Okay. Yeah. So, and I think that's another way to to look at it is this this data. Okay. So this is just basically the you know it's because it's implemented in C. You can see what is just this is basically a Bitcoin block. Um, the headers are you know basically backlined to the main blockchain, creating a chain of blocks, and it's a known blockchain. So this is basically the version you have to. These are the, the important data, number of outputs. Basically, this is just uh, no number of inputs. That's basically it is um, um, where it comes from, the previous hash, okay, um, to which you are referring. And then you have a vector. It's a transaction input. Um, so, so, you know, so this one is, this is basically the amount that you have and then the amount transaction input is i think i just um let me go to the actual so this is actually this is ethereum um we can see one can actually go and look at the transaction latest transaction this is it okay so amount but we can see the yeah so yeah the total input and total outputs are basically the unit and then so the address um to which this is yeah so this is basically the inputs and outputs are basically the the one that's defined so the output address and the inputs uh, it's it's a vector right so the input and outputs are structures as well and so we can it's yeah um so the input, so there are, because you have to define how many inputs there are. So of course, that's the input is, the input index is zero uh, because you have only one input and then its address is that. That's basically, you can, I think this is, this must be searched. Um, I think this is the one. So this is the previous hash. This is the input count. This is the index. Then, okay, so this is.
Uh, I'll get back to you because it's basically just I have to read that I have to whether it is it's not back back tracing. It will identify. It will identify based on by tracing the last output. So of basically the so for example to check if it has if you have if this inputs value like whatever we are saying so the the script i hate these names um, Yeah, I think this is better. Yeah. So, so the section one is the, of course the version, and the section two is the input. So the previous TXID exactly. So this one will define. Yeah, the pre it's not the the previous you have to mention the last transaction that you had right so the you have to reference the last transaction that gave you some coin you know so let's start now from a genesis and the genesis is basically the genesis right it's by hand and now that genesis code for example transfers to binium some amount now that transaction uh, is has an ID. Now this one, if you want, now if you if you believe that you know you are the recipient of that transaction, then you must have the transaction ID, and then you are referring to the transaction ID. But in the transaction ID, the output is, you know, the, because that transaction could outlist multiple um, transactions, multiple outputs. So you must specify which output do you belong to. These two combination basically tells Bitcoin or like you know the, the blockchain how much you have because based on that they can go and look for this and they will know that the you know that basically they will know how much you have because in that output it's listed. So that output you can refer it here. I'll just come back to it because the outputs are identical and 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 that from that the value that was assigned to that output that is your basically for this address value and then basically now you are saying from this address value give another person this amount so that's the output value so this is the only thing bitcoin i need to refer does is it clear now it should just be super clear and these transactions as i said are saved in the merkle tree just every transaction is saved in the merkle tree and the reason in Mer Mer the Merkle tree is basically adding and adding, adding of transactions. William, is that, is that answer? Yes, it's very clear. So um, uh, do we save uh, that uh, ID uh, ourselves or? Yes, yeah, you're basically your wallet or you, your whatever do will have to save that. So that's basically, um, when yeah so from wherever you are referring you must save that exactly because that's okay. yeah thank you yeah in in it, it this is different from uh, of course as i say in from um, uh, ethereum because ethereum stores these things for you in a in its state space basically and that state space is i think you can basically earlier as i was saying ethereum has this memory um like basically this is this is the uh, this is ethereum and this is bitcoin bitcoin is like very it doesn't have any anything it's just every block contains list of transactions and this thing no memory itself no static like kind of memory that's that everything is living while in ethereum you have much more 
space, you know, and that basically means accounts make sense. There are two types of accounts and accounts have names, you know, or basically balance. Accounts have address, accounts have storage, accounts have another thing called code, code hash or code space. Okay, so because of that, Ethereum, whatever can do, you know, this code, you know, um, it can define um, the account. Like it, you can have another called smart contract account, which is basically purely a code. So it's different. Algorand also is, is similar to blockchain. It has, it has this, but not only now it has balance, actually Algorand is different because it's, it's not only, so as you see, Ethereum supports balance, but this balance is kind of a, a type of balance that you have um, that is much more for it, like for it, Ether only, like or the, just the gases. But every NFT kind of token must be stored as part of a, a, a smart contract, while Algorand has much more structure. So if you just say, um, if we just now try to explore. Um, Algorand block elements. And if we look at the image, Algorand has much more um, things inside of it. Unlike, unlike even Ether, it supports different definition, basically different data class for, um, for NFT, and many other things. So that's why when Algorand says, oh, NFTs are first class or they, they live on, on blockchain, what they mean is that they really, they are basically similar to like, they have something, a space. And so they can be transacted just like any, any other thing, um, any, like, like just what you transact uh, in Ethereum uh, ethers. Okay, uh, there, all of them are, in that single space. It's basically, they have account states in that memory. So they basically have a much more structure in the, in in what you call your storage or like it's not your storage, you, your data, let's call it just your data is much more, has more, more structure. Okay, I know we are way over time, but what I want to know is something clear now or are you more confused? And just say what you feel. Martin, much clearer. Michael, a lot clearer. Binium. Great. Henok. Uh, yeah. Uh, good design clear. So why, why I, I don't hear like, Salam and others like the females. Nardos, great. What I, I just really need some kind of feedback. And you know, we are not anymore in this training, whatever. I, we are learning, co-learning together. Okay. So you need to yeah, be just active and participant like that, either in the text or in in you know, by just speaking, especially just speak sometimes. It's if always just uh, is only similar voice, it doesn't feel good. So great, awesome. I'm happy that it is a bit clearer. Again, the more you read it, it will get even more clearer. But just know that you start, you must start thinking that you are the creator of Bitcoin. You're the creator of Algorand. Unless you are able to go through it, what is the token, what's an address, what is this, what is that? You, If you just speak the general language, you are, for me, you haven't understood it, okay? So for us, we are technical people. We need to think in code terms, in variable terms, in class function, um, properties terms, okay? So Martin. Okay, uh, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I wanted to ask, um, for a transaction to be complete, uh, you need the previous transaction and uh, the all those elements that uh, you had uh, shared. Is there like a possibility of uh, interchanging the transactions 
so that uh, it gives maybe a different like previous transaction or maybe it gives like a fault of a, a false uh like uh no. previous information the, the simple answer is no the reason is all you send is like it's like a, you know ssh key what do you do when you do ssh key you sign it your machine you may not know but when you say ssh something what you're really saying is that you sign something and you pass it and then the other one will will just check whether it's you or not that's it it doesn't care what what is in the message at first so it can only start looking at the message if it is deferred if the message can be read the message will not be read by you know if your public key and private key don't match so now if you sign once that's it and you send it somebody will verify and when they verify they basically that's called verification when they verify great the transaction happened done you cannot revert it back there is no way to revert it back there's no way to modify it as well there's nothing it's a one-time thing because that becomes added now in a layer of hashes and every hash that builds on top of it basically depends on that value on the value of that hash therefore that's what's called merkle tree you know so it depends on the hash of your transaction if your transaction changes by a single 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 comma or a dot it will nullify everything and nobody can do that that's why it's just basically that's it yeah, by mistake you you you, you send something too bad that's why the private key owner is on everything there does that address martin your question yeah yeah so there is no modification or anything when the transaction happened its hash becomes the gene it's in, it's a gene of that blockchain nobody can modify the gene of the blockchain Binim. Thank you for the opportunity, but uh, I understand that the Merkle tree is more of a, a series of branches instead of just one line. Yeah. So what occasion uh, is a branch created from a certain uh, uh, base block? Uh, why can't just why can't it be just uh, added as a chain, just one line, uh, one long chain? because that's what the, the you know it's the design of it is this what makes of course bitcoin amazing right in a way they thought about it you know they thought about all of this so well that they did it once and ever that's it right? at least in bitcoin terms the reason is that what if so the devs of the merkel tree can be large but you don't need to check every single thing to actually verify you can choose you can choose in the milk country that's really the, the beauty of it is yeah here so you see if you change anything everything will change okay so basically you can't right if you change one here then it's basically this is connected to this 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 that's connected to that right so basically this one which is the the block will be different there is no such block or basically there is no such reference so you can't you can't change it but not only that in actually the the real advantage is that you to verify it whether it is intact that all transactions are intact you don't need to check every line by line you can actually select a few of them and if your few of them are correct then you know it's like basically this nobody has um, tampered with it okay so that's the advantage and on top of that it's also because ultimately what you are storing is like in a block in what you are storing is just the hash of that the final hash you know this this the merkle tree root hash is basically this one is the list of transactions are here all of the list of transactions 
okay, for this block. This block has list of transactions it starts with, which is the base, right? If there are a, a thousand transactions in this block, they're all a base. And each of them then two by two like that you create and finally you, you have like a Merkel root hash. That root hash is what is saved in a block. Now, if the root hash will change if anything in, in the base is changed. So it's a way of really encoding and, and, and making it so impossible to change. Because always you can verify. If, when you say, I verified the code, it means that like if you are now opening a new node and if you are downloading, you will, tr you will basically verify. And the way you verify is that you hash everything here and the hash of and hash of hash of that must be equal to that. If not, ah, this block is fake. So itself, it contains everything to do everything this block. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Anyone can verify the consistency of this block at any time by hash, by producing the hash of that or the Merkle tree hash, and then by comparing with what was minted. And they will not, they will be different if anything, anyone to try to tamper, if you go one block back, you try to do something, no, then this block is wrong. And so nobody accepts it. And if nobody accepts it, nobody refers it. Therefore, it will not be in the chain. So it automatically basically discourages any tempering. That's why it's, you know, why we have $3 trillion, you know, in kind of crypto market, because it's just basically you can't, you can't tamper it. Great. Read, understand, and hopefully you will. This is your chance. If you haven't asked it, practice asking in the days to follow. You absolutely will not gain by not asking and exercising your brain, going through certain like, okay, do I understand this, that, but no, here I don't understand. How did this and that are connected? If your brain is not generating question, it means it is it is passive, it's not active. And if your brain generates question and you don't ask it, then you are not shy because shy was in the first weeks. Now you are, I mean, I would say, okay, let's not label that. So it must be for me, like the way that I, I believe something will work is, if you are active listener, that means you are actually in the process we are talking, you're kind of connecting dots. If you are unable to connect dots, you, you can't, you have to shout, say like, I'm unable to connect dots. I don't even understand X, Y, Z. How can, where do I start? How can I fit this in my brain? It is that being a child to perceive it is important. So I really encourage everyone, you know, to, to try to be always, you know, mm, how how does where is it my if we don't understand something try to identify where is it i'm not understanding is it the whole concept that i don't understand if it's the whole concept that i don't understand where should i start so okay you know where where should i ask like where should i penetrate it first where should i punch first if you have understand something but the flow in your mind stops somewhere you have to identify where that flow stops and you, you, you ask help, like, okay, can you help me to continue from here? So if, if that is kind of way of thinking you generate, you really, you really, this is a really good thing to experience, okay? It's just, it really helps me. And it's always about being that active, actively figuring out where is, where is the block, you know? You know, and, and um, where do you dig, where do you ask? And definitely, they, I'm sure you have, number of questions a lot of you who didn't even ask and you have to it's okay like you know because if everybody asks of course we don't have also time but it should be that just like it should be random in a sense like 
you should sometimes ask as well. Like it should be much more active. It should just be so active and everyone wants, should find to try to understand it deeper and to try to demystify some of the things that they don't understand. It should be that, there should be hunger associated. The same hunger that you show to work when you are working on it. Like, you know, I have seen you guys really work hard and fantastic, you know? And in the question space as well, it has to be that hunger, that hunger has to come here as well. And that question and kind of, you know, openness must come here as well. So hopefully should, um, we should improve over time and should get so natural as we go on. Okay, thank you so much. And thank you for, you know, sorry for taking time. Um, yeah, but we can stop recording and let's stop here. Uh, there was a question that uh, Michael asked. Okay. I missed, uh, uh, but it wasn't uh, so Martin, which one is that? Okay, so Michael asked it, I think based on the house. Okay, Martin, maybe can you ask? Uh, Michael, can you ask? The yeah, it was like, I will ask the, the difference between you, you, you described about Genesis block and the protocols. Maybe yeah. can you elaborate it more? That was my question. So the protocol is basically, you know, the software that when you create, you create just like you know, in probably we should, we should also, this is really the same as the a smart contract, right? A smart contract, you write it, it's a hash. That's it. It is now part of any transaction. It's stored. You can't go and change the, the smart contract. You are unable. It's immutable. Okay. So it's immutable. It basically means there is no way that you know, it is connected deeply to the, to the account. And that means that is also part of a transaction because it was the first time you created, you basically made a transaction and the transaction contains the hash of what was in that basically, which includes also the code. Now, if you try to change the code, basically you are changing the block, the block, this, this account was created. You can't. Right. So that's why you write a pro you write a smart contract. You will never edit it. If you want to edit it, you have to create a new account or a new smart contract. Thing, right. So it's basically you, that's it. But once a smart contract is created, it's created. You will never able, be able to edit it. Okay. And the hash of it corresponds to the hash there. So everybody can check your code and say like, can read it. The reason why they can read it because it's like they can hash your code and then see if it's identical if it's not they don't trust that smart contract as simple as that because everything is the hash of everything and it's stored somewhere that you cannot change that's why the whole crypto thing you know the whole blockchain thing is just makes sense right it's just that nobody can change nobody can alter nobody can tamper they make it impossible to do that okay so the genesis block is the first thing that just comes how it defines the rule of the play how things are being done now that is defined there and and the code that is running basically of course you know if you download a node and if you are now verifying whatever it's just the code right but that code defines how after that you're going to update from that on there is nothing special treatment for anything it's only when you first release your code and your genesis block that you can do some whatever choice you make that's where like your, your choice after that, that's it. Everybody will have it and they must agree for any change. So let's imagine the protocol you want to change from X to Y. In that case, absolutely. It is the whole people who are associated to this blockchain must agree and they must all update at the same time. That means the protocol is the, the code that is basically that creates that mines uh, blocks, that uh, accepts what, you know, that verifies what is a good block, a bad block, whatever it is. So of course, if everybody who now owns this thing agrees, you can't change anything. You can't even burn anything, right? The whole world depends on it. But that means you need consensus of the whole to actually make any change. If there is no, when this consensus doesn't happen, what happens? There's a fork. Basically, if a part of the people don't don't like the new updates to the code, they say no, we don't update, we don't like your new version. We will continue this the the current version. Now 
the two splits that's called a hard enough work but if the you know everybody agrees great then everybody updates their code that means now the thing will continue so that's why ethereum for example has multiple updates in its uh, protocol not only that they are now planning to update even to move away from proof of work to proof of stake that is really where you know if that is the case now everybody will have to change basically how they verify right so yeah does that, okay. that, that, yeah can can we say like this how the, the genesis block incorporates like the consensus in the protocol can we say like no that? no, no. The, so the software that is used to basically you know if you download um, the bitcoin signing uh, software or sdk algorand sdk for example that's the kind of where the protocols whatever is written in the software itself in the software that runs the genesis block is the first block that just that's just the starting block a block is always whether it's genesis or not has the same thing who hashed it basically if it is a proof of work who like the pre like the the hash from the hash of the previous block in the genesis case this would this will be empty or it would be the the hash of some zero 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 zero, zero. and then the hash of uh the transaction in this case the transaction will be the person would just because there is no transaction there's no previous input and output will out will will give themselves like some account they will just put input zero and then output to be something so it's basically it is a block a genesis block is really a block with no transaction tree merkel tree but with all of the variables defined it's basically the initialization of the block okay it has nothing that inside it nothing other than just these numbers it would call it json okay you know if, if if every block is a json this is just a json a special a special json that some parameters are omitted or not omitted but null a block is really considered like as a json and the manipul something that manipulates and creates new json is it's kind of what you call protocol. The protocol is basically the software that everybody is able to download and use, or the SDK if it's uh, you know if it's if you are programming it from different. Um, yeah, does that does that make sense, Michael? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the protocol. Like okay, go on. Consensus in protocol are uh, the same. I think the same. Cons yeah, protocol defines protocol defines how consensus happen for example http protocol defines how handshakes between two servers happen right it basically defines there has to be there has to be a header there has to be in the header there has to be this and this and that and that and then if this this these are this number of you know this string that code this da 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 da, da then the other person, you know, should know it comes from here. So it's, you know, the HTTP protocol defines how handshakes happen between different two uh, servers. So consensus between two happens then based on the data, based on the definition. Both will refer to the protocol for any agreement, for any consensus. So the consensus is basically, so the protocol is, the blueprint of the consensus uh, how consensus should be reached it's it's basically the arbitrage it, it, it just does you know everybody consults to it to know what is how how to how to make consensus okay yeah can you thank you awesome great then uh, we can stop the recording and we can close it here Hopefully it was useful and a good start, even if I didn't cover as much as I wanted to cover. Great, but this is important. Thank you everyone. Bye.